Okay, so something different this week. My regular followers on Twitter will know I like to cook, and I've worked in and around kitchens for the best part of the last decade, but I'm not about that life no more. And I put those skills now to use as an enthusiastic home cook, and at Christmas I posted a picture of some congee I'd made, and one of my followers, James, tweeted me this. Look, Matt, we all love the bad spot, obviously, but when's the cooking channel starting? And in a moment of flippancy, I said that if I got to 3,000 subs, I would do a cooking video. And at the time, I think I only had about 1,600 subscribers, but it's been a pretty good 2023. And here we are. So we're going to cook something, and that something is raboki. Now, raboki is a Korean dish using these rice cakes, and the most popular thing to make with these is a dish called teboki. But I'm going to show you how to make a variant with ramen called raboki. But first, a disclaimer. I am not Korean, nor have I ever been to Korea, and this recipe makes no claims to authenticity. I am just an enthusiast who has read a bunch of cookbooks and watched a lot of videos and tried a bunch of recipes made by much more talented people. Here's a list of some of the YouTubers I've learned this recipe and these techniques from, and if you want to see this done properly, then you can check them out, and I'll put a link to all their channels in the description below. Okay, this first step you can skip if you want. Uh, I've seen some recipes do it and some not, but I do think it helps just break the rice cakes up a little bit. We're going to be breaking them up into individual sticks, uh, but it can be a bit tricky uh, right out of the pack, so I soak mine for about 10 minutes, and I think it helps just a little, but you can blow right by this stage if you want. Now I'm making this recipe vegan so you can all enjoy it because I'm very thoughtful like that. So you'll need some tofu. Uh, this is extra firm tofu and I'm going to chop this into chunks. And this was a real pain to do with the camera uh, where it was. So the cuts will spare me the embarrassment here. Um, take the chunks once you've done this uh, and then whack it in a tub with some corn flour and give it a shake and voila. Uh, before this, you can actually marinate it overnight in some soy sauce and some rice wine vinegar maybe, but I just forgot, so here we are. Anyway, let's just fry this up in some neutral oil, rapeseed oil, vegetable oil, sunflower, canola oil, whatever. Uh, and you just want to crisp these up, get a bit of colour on them. And when that's done, pop them on some kitchen towel and sit them aside. Okay, let's make a sauce for this. And the first thing I'm going to need is goshugaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes. Uh, it got a bit of heat, it's got a bit of smokiness, I love this stuff. Now, I've got one tablespoon here, and that's a good place to start. You can up this to two or three if you really want to crank up the heat. That's all down to you. Next is two tablespoons of light soy sauce. Get that in there. And then you want some sweetener. And I'm using maple syrup, and boy, this bottle is nearly empty. Uh, but it's good. I only need one teaspoon of sweetener. You can go two if you want. And you can also use brown sugar or whatever you've got. Okay, next up is gochujang. Uh, this is incredible stuff, always in my fridge. It's uh, fermented red pepper paste, and it uh, has a very pleasant kick, uh, but a ton of flavor. So two generous tablespoons in here. And now two teaspoons of toasted sesame oil, and I'm nearly out of this too. I really need to go shopping. And then next it is this mushroom seasoning. This is a staple of vegan and vegetarian kitchens, and... Gives dishes a real uh, umami punch. I think in Raboki normally anchovy is used, but this is a great substitute. And lastly, we're going to go in with two big cloves of garlic, and I'll just crush them right in there. You just watch me. And then we'll whisk them up to make this pleasingly thick dark red sauce. Okay, next we'll take a pan like this and put a litre of water in and crank the heat up. Then we'll take some kelp. Uh, normally this kelp comes in slices, but I've just got these knots knocking around, so I'm using these. And you could also at this stage put some dried shiitake in, and I would normally do that, but I didn't have any, so we'll just go with these knots. And you want to bring this up to the boil and simmer it for about I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes. When that time's up, you can fish the knots out and add the rice cakes that you have now broken or cut up individual sticks. Then you come in hot with the sauce and get every last bit of that in there. And then you want to just set this to a simmer. And the rice cakes will start to expand and soak up all this flavour. And after about 10 minutes, they'll soften right up and go a bit wobbly like this. Now we'll take some spring onions, or scallions, if that's what you want to call them. And take the whites and cut them like this into lengths. Then you just whack those right in there and save the greens for later. Okay, now we need some noodles. And for this recipe, I like this brand. And we'll take these noodle discs and just jam them right in there. And this recipe is for two people, so you'll need two packets of ramen. Don't be shy. Squeeze them in there. There is room. They will fit. And then they'll start to soften up. And when they do, you want to get the tofu back in there. 
And at this point, we're nearly done. What you want to do is grab a couple of bowls and get this on the table between the two of you and get those spring onion greens from earlier and put them on top. And then we're going to go in with some sesame seeds. I've got some black and some white here, which is, you know, aesthetically pleasing, if nothing else. And we're done. This is the basic recipe. You can put all kinds of stuff in here. You can put extra veggies, you can put seafood if that's your thing, eggs, dumplings, those are also good. And the rice cakes and the noodles thicken that sauce up and there's just like a ton of flavor in here. I love making this and I hope you will too. Now there's just one last thing to shoot and that's the money shot of, of me eating this in a very refined manner. Um, absolutely not getting it all over my face. Yeah, so that was my 3000 subscriber cooking video. I have to say I have a newfound respect for food tubers after doing that because I found that really difficult and totally counterintuitive to how I normally cook, which has a chaotic energy, which won't surprise some of you. And I will say now, if and when I hit another subscriber milestone, I will do literally anything else but cook. Thanks to all my subscribers and to all my lovely patrons, and thankfully normal service will resume next week when I can get back on my nerd bullshit. So until then, it is farewell and safe passage.